Hey, hey everybody, this is Melina from scrapbookingwithme.com and me, Crafty Scrapper, here on YouTube and Instagram. Today I am um, altering a book and this is a Dollar Tree book. So if you have a local Dollar Tree and you can find this book, I'm going to tell you why you really need to get this book. So I needed a book that was a little taller and bigger than what I already had in my stash of vintage books. So I went to Dollar Tree just to see what they had. This one measures um, nine, yep, nine and a half tall by almost six and a half wide. So I love the size of it, but then also in it now I, I don't know anything about this author somebody that's watching might know her and love her um, work but I don't know anything about this author I love, and then there is the spine okay pretty thick but I wanted to show y'all this before we start altering this book which at our Dollar Tree is still one dollar <laughs> they haven't went up at our Dollar Tree um, I just thought this was the best dollar as far as a new book that I would ever spend because it has some vintage photos in it so I've kind of bookmarked some of these so I could show them to you I thought these pictures were fabulous old pictures look at that great old pictures and then even some vintage newsprint that um, or ads that's in a different language look at that huge group picture just old 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 pictures and I thought even if I don't use them in this particular project that I'm getting this book for I could tear these pages out and use these pictures and prints and other things of mine so I just love that love these old pictures that's probably one of my favorites of the old pictures so if you can find bridge of words at your Dollar Tree it's worth getting because I just love all those vintage pictures. So in an altered book, I think I've really only done this one time and I didn't make a video about it. It's been a long time ago. I like to keep at least six pages up front. I'm not counting this page because this is the um, interior cover that runs along the whole front cover and I'm not counting that as page so I'm going six one two three four five and six and we've got about I'm going to do the same thing as far as saving in the back so not counting that cover one two three four five and six All right so that way I know not to mess with those that are paper clipped okay we're good um, so we're looking at about... Okay, through so we're looking at about 340 ish pages here in the middle that we're going to have to do something with because we're going to be making pockets and things like that out of these pages some of these too Those are our foundation pages that we don't want to tear out so what I'm thinking about doing is tearing out 10 
So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to keep a four pages. So you've got a front pocket. You've got a page for it to adhere to. Then you have this page that these two are going to be glued together. And then you have a pocket behind. So a four page sandwich that's going to have a pocket on either side. And then you're going to count 10 more, or I'm going to count 10 more. Um, you have to just figure out for your own book how many pages you want to tear out in between and how Pac-Man mouth you want your final journal to be. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then four page sandwich. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea mm -hmm. of how we're going here. These will be gone. These will be gone. These will be left. These will be gone. These will be left. So that's what I'm going to go through and do. Uh, I have saved six in the front, ten out, four page sandwich to keep. Whatever's got a paper clip on it, it's going to keep. And then ten pages out, four page sandwich. And I'm going to go through and do every one of these pages. I missed a picture to show y'all. And then we're going to come back and I'll show you what we have left as far as this book goes and what pages we're going to make pockets out of. So there's our first 10 out. So there's our six that we saved in the front. 10 pages come out and then our four page sandwich. And then another 10 pages out. And then those 10 pages are out. So one, two, three, four page sandwich. And then 10 more. So I'm going to just keep doing that until I get to the end. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like after all of my bulk pages are torn out. I have thinned it out quite a bit. And I'll show you there is the top of that I know I'm getting really close to that camera so it's not wanting to focus on it but I've got all of mine clipped of where I want to put my pockets and things and you will see where pa pages have been torn out I want to keep that um, just because it adds to the um, vintage look of it to me but um, I mean if some of it is sticking out too far and you think it's going to harm or get in the way of some of your pockets you can trim it down just a little bit if you're altering a book but I wouldn't um, try to get every bit of it out because it keeps the integrity of your spine and um, that way uh, pages are not uh, more apt to fall out so anyways, we've got enough room in here for like 26 pockets and then a few um, pages that are just going to be uh, covered with coffee dyed paper or something like that for journaling itself and not um, a pocket. So what I'm going to do, try to lean that up there, you can see that a little bit better, try to lean it up so it's not so close to the camera and out of focus. So these two pages will be decorated. Um, the cover is going to be decorated. And then 
I'm going to because this page and this page are glued together even further up than any of the other pages in the book. I'm just going to go ahead and glue these two pages together because if I try to decorate that, see how it pulls up with this piece, it's not going to do me any good. So I'm just going to glue it to the page in front of it. And you can use glue stick or whatever you want to use. This is um, either art glitter glue or barely arts glue. One of the two that's in my Sugar Bell bottle. Alright, so those two pages are glued together. And then we have one, two, three, four, five until we get to our first pocket. Now, this one's actually going to be a pocket two. So we can do decoration on this page. We can do a pocket here. And what I'm thinking about doing is um, doing a double pocket. So one, two, and then that would be the foundation page for those two pockets. And then that glued to that one. And then this one made into a pocket. And I'm thinking just folding that down and that one being a pocket like that. So that's how I want to do the very front of that first six pages that we kept in the book. So that one, those two will be decoration. That will be a decoration. And then we're going to do a double pocket here. So we're going to go all the way into that spine and fold that page down. And then we're going to get this one and fold it back behind that page like so. And then this will be glued to this page three ways. And then this one will be glued to that one three ways. So we've got a pocket here and a pocket here. So I'm going to paper clip those together. And before we start gluing all these pages down, I want to decorate first. So that's why I'm not going ahead and gluing those pockets down. But that's how I want that first pocket page to look. So decoration, double pocket page. And then these two pages are going to be glued together to give us some sturdiness. So I can go ahead and do that because that's no decoration involved whatsoever. They're just going to get glued together. So I'll go around that page and glue those together to get us some sturdy pages and enough um, strength to keep our pockets together. Oh yeah, that feels a lot better. Okay, so there is that first double pocket page. And then this one is going to be a pocket onto that. And like I said, I think I'm just going to do the um, fold over little triangle secretarial look to this one. like that and let's get a paper clip to hold that on all right so decorated page double pocket page and then triangle pocket page so that will be our pocket there and then we could do a triangle pocket page here to match that one i think that's what we'll do we come to our first four page sandwich and these two 
inner pages of the four page sandwich will always be glued together. So go ahead and do that so you don't confuse yourself as to what needs to be glued together and what doesn't in your four page sandwich section. Four page sandwich section. Okay, uh, I'm going to do that same type of triangle pocket there to match that one. Then we've got the two pages that are glued together. And then we have this one. And I think to fold back this one and make it a pocket here. And then we could even leave some of this and have a little tuck space there. So let's do a paper clip here and there. Next four page sandwich gets our two middle pages glued together. And then for this pocket, I'm going to do the little airplane fold, meet my two points there. And this will all get covered and then it will get glued down the middle here and you'll have a pocket here and a pocket there. And then this one on the back side of that pocket, I want to just have a um, top pocket, uh, do a little pull there, and have this whole page as a pocket. And then we can decorate the whole page too, so that whole page will be a pocket coming out from there, and that will give us some interest at the top of our book too when we open and close it. So I'm going to write in pencil, if I can find one here, yes, top, just so that I remember what my idea was there. I have went ahead and um, covered my front cover with white gesso and it's just like dirty ice in a cake it doesn't have to be um, uh, one smooth layer it doesn't have to have everything covered but I'm going to put um, one of the book pages after I ink it down as the base of that and then after I tear it and ink it and then this is going to be a Christmas um, journal, so that is going to be on the front. So the white gesso is really just going to be as accents around where I don't have book page or that paper from the paper pad. And that is from the November e-club kit that Simple Stories um, collection is. I'm going to put lace down like this, but that is all after I get my book page down. So I just picked a random page that I tore out of the book that I'm going to put on the front. And I'll finish the spine with that um, white gesso in the back after this dries. So I'm just tearing kind of willy-nilly and maybe leaving a little white space on the edges but not much because most of this is going to be covered up with that paper so it's just going to be an accent too so we're just building accents um, you might say before we put on the main decoration 
Okay, so there is my torn page that's going to go on the front. And I think I'm going to use Walnut Stain. And I'm going to put it on pretty heavy and dirty up uh, the top and bottom because that might be the only parts that really get seen anyway. The sides are not going to get seen because that paper is going to cover up every bit of it. So I'm just going to ink top and bottom. Because, see, this paper is wider than this. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. So the top and the bottom of this book page will be seen. But this is going to be our first layer that goes on top of this gesso. And I'm getting my collage podge out to put this down. I'm just going to put it there in the middle of that and a little on the back of that and get it spread out all over the back of my book page. And then we could even, when we get both of these paper layers down, we could um, seal it with some clear gesso if we wanted to. Just going to get that Mod Podge spread out, or Collage Podge, sorry. Spread out there, and then lay that down pretty much in the middle of that cover. So down some, there, okay, and I'm just going to seal down those edges, the top and bottom, before we put down this other piece of paper. And um, let's see, yeah, I'm going to put the lace down after I put this down too. So I'm going to trim this, this is six by eight, so I'm going to trim about a half inch off the top bottom and about a half inch off of the sides, but I'm not going to cut off my lettering. I want that to be on it, so sorry I'm having to do this off camera, but y'all know how to trim up paper. Okay, let's make sure Yeah, I'm going to trim off just a touch more off of this bottom just so that um, I get a good showing of that boot page. Yep, I like that. And then I'm going to, um, let's see, do I want to round these corners? I think I do. Okay, and then ink my edges. up some of that white space. Okay, I'm going to put this down with my collage polish too.
and then my little ratty lace pieces and I'm not going to get it in that crevice there so it's going to come over a little bit like this and I'm going to put it down with some Fabrifix and not go over that where the book cover bends And then I'll trim off uh, my excess after it dries on here good. I think I might want to because if I put that over the bend it's fine and it's not glued down so it's not going to be in the way of it. So even if it's overhanging on this part, it's not going to get in the way of it um, opening and closing because it's just a little thin piece of lace. And then that over the top of that and just hanging off that way a little bit. So let's do some more fabric fix on top of this. Just one line. And then have it overlapping that way like that and I'm fine with that one word being covered up and then I got these three pieces out from the die cut set and I'm going to ink them and put them on with the collage podge it's a little ticket that I'll kind of cattywamper there on that edge and this little torn ticket piece will layer on top of that and then this little heart piece in the corner or I might put it down ooh I like it down there too yep okay all right let's just put some collage pies there and spread it out where our pieces will be there and then put some on top of that there And then really get that stuck down because I have um, done journals before where I didn't get the elements really stuck down that were on the cover and years later they are it's just a mess as far as um, I've got <laughs> one of my old mini albums that I put a deer on the front of and its legs are almost completely torn off like it's an amputee it's it's awful um so i try my best to <laughs> get everything um pretty sealed on there so it's not going to go anywhere once the book goes in and out of bookcases and drawers and things like that okay I like that. So I will let that all dry. And I think I might put some speckles and splatters. Y'all know me and my 
need to speckle and splatter everything. Okay, I'm going to cover up my paper clips on that side and I'm going to cover up my lace on this side. Maybe. There we go. Just covering up what I don't want splattered. This is the Vintage Photo Oxide. That big splatter is something that I didn't want to happen, but, and it is oxide, so maybe it'll um, kind of clear out a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of green on this and hopefully not two big splatters of green. Want some down here in the corner. And there. Okay. I'm going to move my I love these splattered book pages I have now move this and then after this dries then I will you know add a few splatters here and then spine and all that but I've got to let um, this main cover dry before I do that I want a few green splatters up there so let's cover up here and here Alright, look at that beautifully splattered book page. I love that. Put that on the top there. I went ahead and got some ink down this spine here and just tried to cover up most of my lace here on top. And so now I need to let this cover dry. This cover that I absolutely love. This is beautiful. And then um, when this oxide spot dries here, it will have that oxide look to it. Like these are already, these little tiny ones are already getting, getting here. Like that one. So pretty. I love that. I love splatters and I love how this has turned out as far as my cover goes. So I am ready, once this is dry, to start um, decorating the inside and pockets and all of that. And I'm going to leave the um, actual spine, the rest of the spine, um, gessoing and the back for the very end because I'm really just going to probably put some book page on the spine and the back and call it a day for those two um, places of this journal but I really love how this has turned out so far on the cover I love all the splatters now if you're a clean and simple kind of crafter of course you don't have to do any splatters and um, before it was splattered it looked perfectly fine too I just like splattering so that's how I'm going to leave my cover, I think, for now. I might change up something later, but I really like how it looks now. I'm going to let it all dry, and then we'll be back, and we'll start decorating the inside and getting decoration put in there and um, our pockets all covered and tags and ephemera and all that put in. Our beautiful cover is finished. And we have all of these beautiful book pages that we can use in other projects. So all of those, I'm going to put those off to the side now. 
and show you we have our cover complete and I will have a um, still shot of it at the end so we still have a little bit of witness but I'll have a still shot at the end so you can see all of it um, used my drying tool and kind of um, burnt the edges a little bit on this lace so it wouldn't just be a straight line we'd have a little bit of quiver to that lace so I've done that and I'm just waiting for all of this to dry you can see that one is not quite dry yet just waiting for all of my splatters to dry so that we can go ahead and get on into this book so I think this will be um, the end of this video uh, when we come back for part two we'll go ahead and start decorating on the inside and um, decorating our pockets and then making our things to go inside of the pockets and we're going to use our um, November e-club kit to do that so we got a pocket there we've got the pockets there and there I'll just go through and show you what I've got lined up so a top pocket here so that'll be a big one and then a tuck pocket there and then this one I thought was neat we'll have a top bottom top bottom tuck on both of those pages and then this top and then a side another side and then a more shallow side so that we can get something bigger and deeper into that one and then two triangle pockets top triangles and then two sides there and then we've got another top bottom top bottom here and then a triangle here this one I'm going to open up and have a side pocket so really deep big side pocket here and we'll have something kind of um, a little tab or something pull tab out here and then you know on that other one we'll have the top out there and on the back of this one we'll have another top pocket so these two um, pockets will be rather big we can fit all kinds of big stuff in that if we want to another side here a side here a triangle here and then this is another side pocket so we'll have something kind of jutting out here we've got another double pocket remember we have that double pocket in the front here so we've got another double pocket in the back and then our last pocket is a triangle and then this will be decorated and this will be decorated and we might even put some pockets back here but I'm thinking that um, I want to decorate these where we can do journaling on um, these two pages and maybe even that one but um, since we've got so many pockets inside we can just decorate these where they can be written on and um, this will be an intro kind of uh, decoration so we might not do too much journaling on these because they will be highly decorated but then these two can be um, made simply you know so that we can um, do some journaling and stuff on it okay and then I haven't gotten all of the spine covered so see I still have spine to cover and back to cover with that white gesso once everything dries up front um, we still have a little bit of drying time that needs to happen and then we will get out the rest of our November e-club kit supplies and start playing around with them and maybe adding some doilies and the rest of our papers and die cuts and the little bling I might even add some of this red bling here and then maybe oh I like that maybe add just down that one row where the two laces meet put our little pom-pom trim right there I really like that
I'll probably do that. I'll probably add that on. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is wanting to crack up today. And then we've got all kinds of other die cuts from the November E-Club kit. Lots and lots and lots more die cuts. So, oh yeah, I might add a couple of those red bling onto the front there too. So this will be our second project using the November uh, E-Club kit. Remember we made these little um, ephemera holders or um, gift card holders in our first little video from the November E-Club kit. So we have plenty of supplies that we can use to decorate a whole other project. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, I will see you back in the second video for this project. So it'll be our third video using the November E-Club kit. We're getting a lot out of this kit. And I hope you're enjoying this little series of sorts. I don't do a lot of series, but um, I hope that you're enjoying this one. I'll see you in the next video where we will finish this journal, all the decorating and tags and things like that. And um, God bless. Y'all have a great day. Bye, y'all. Mm -hmm.